Hi there, welcome to my views and news. Two new stories. Firstly, it seems that Skandar Naga, Pano commander, is changing his position on talks with Ethiopian government. What did he say around three weeks ago? And what did he say a few hours ago when he gave an interview and questions were asked about negotiations with Ethiopian government? Secondly, since the start of the conflict in the Mahar region, we have not seen a single uh, confirmed attack on banks. Though Ufano groups remain in control of town cities, but uh, they did not rob banks. At least we could not confirm that. But first incident uh, of bank robbery in the Mahar region, which group was behind this robbery? Uh, how much was the loss suffered by the bank? Uh, when did it happen? Firstly, we heard uh, around uh, three weeks ago, U.S. Ambassador to Ethiopia, Arvin Masinga, gave a speech in Addis Ababa. And he urged uh, armed groups like Ola Fano to talk to the government. He asked the government as well to show flexibility. The government should not imprison critics. And he asked TPLF too that uh, issues, contentious issues should be solved through that. Uh, after that, Fano groups spoke separate statements. Skandar Naga released an audio message. He showed flexibility. He said, yes, talks should happen. Talks are part of resistance movement. But back then he said that before the start of talks, a representative pan-Amhara organization should be established with participation of all Amhara players and then talks should start. So he agreed to talk to the government. Only precondition back then he shared was that there should be representative Amhara body. Uh, a few hours ago, Skandar was interviewed by the BBC. And it seems that man is now changing his position. Again, question was asked about talks with the government. He said that uh, most of the Fano groups are operating separately, independently. And right now, an effort is underway to unify the Fano groups. After creation of unity, the groups will decide about talks, whether talks should be held or not. But he said, in principle, talks are acceptable. So last time he said that, yes, talks should be held after the formation of representative body. Now he says that, no, after unity, all groups will sit and they will decide whether talks should be held or not. So. Uh, Skandar, by the way, came under pressure when he released that audio message because other Fano groups refused to talk to the government. They issued statements laying out some very tough preconditions as if they were not interested in starting any genuine dialogue with the government. Skandar was criticized back then, if you remember. Some uh, people accused him of working in collaboration with the government. That is why I think he is backtracking. Now he's saying that all groups should unite and then they should decide. Basically, uh, Fano groups and those who support Fano, they are against talks. They say that talks with this uh, government are futile. Government wants to crush Amhara groups, Amhara people. That is why the government should be removed first and only then talks can be held about post-removal scenario. Uh, so, if this is their precondition, it cannot be met. Obviously, government is not ready to go. Government is here. Government wants to crush them militarily. Skandar, we know, faced uh, some hard times recently. He founded Amhara Popular Front last year, which was mainly based in Gojum. He took over the Minakasi's uh, Gojum Fano group. Minakasi uh, was back then in prison. Later, Zminikasi was released by the government. Zminikasi returned to Gojum. He reclaimed his group. Skandar was left without any group. Then he went to Volo and then he ended up in Shoah. 
Now he is in show and he is uh, leading a small group of fighters here. Uh, in show, we know that a few days ago talks kicked off between two main show of arm commanders, Asagad Makanan and Makatao. Skandar was not included in those talks. If he is an influential player in Shoa, he should have been part of these talks. Talks about creation of zonal level structure. Because Shoa Fano is not united. Wolo Fano under one command, Gujjam Fano under one command, Gondar and Shoa Fano not under one command. Talks started, Skandar was not part of talks. So Skandar wants to be relevant uh, because he. Uh, sacrificed a lot. He could have stayed in the US, but he returned from the US. He was threatened that he should not come back to Ethiopia. He came. He was head of Baldiras party. He chose armed struggle over uh, political struggle. Uh, so he, he believes that uh, he is the one who has sacrificed a lot. And people, especially the diaspora community, Sports Skandar a lot. They, th they say that Skandar is the man who is genuinely concerned for Amhara cause. But he is not man of the field, man of uh, the... He does not have the required military experience, obviously. So he cannot lead the military operations, obviously. But uh, yes, he will have some role in negotiations. Let's see when negotiations start so far. Predominantly, Fano groups seem to be opposed to the idea of negotiation with the government. That is why Skandar is taking now uh, a position which is a little different from what he said a few weeks ago. Secondly, there was a bank robbery in the Amhara region, not by criminal elements, but by an armed group. Criminal elements do rob banks. It happens across the world. But bank robbery in Amhara was committed by an armed group. Which armed group? The incident happened in Midda Ramo Vareda, which is in North Shore zone of the Amhara region. There, uh, a branch of the Commercial Bank of Ethiopia was robbed. Over 2 million burr. Uh, were lost in this robbery. The zonal uh, administrator Saeed Ibrahim confirmed the robbery. It happened yesterday. He confirmed that yesterday CB branch was uh, robbed by armed group. He did not name the armed group, by the way. Which armed groups are operating in Shoa? Uh, mainly Fano. Mainly Fano, there are some Romo uh, armed farmers too, but they mainly operate in border areas, uh, Romia special zone, North Shoah zone border areas. Main armed group operating in North Shoah is Fano. Did Fano commit this robbery? So why didn't the government administrator mention Fano's name? He did not say Fano's name. Secondly, locals are saying that uh, the bank robbery happened because the local armed group was not happy because its accounts had been blocked. Accounts of its members had been blocked. They went to the bank and they came to know that their accounts had been blocked by the government. So they decided to attack the bank. Attack the bank, they took the money. Uh, so this is what happened. This is the uh, first attack, I would say, on a bank by Fano groups. I could not confirm any other attacks by Fano fighters on banks. They don't target banks mostly, uh, though they are in need of money. But it's their policy. They don't attack banks. They attack government institutions. They attack uh, police stations. They capture weapons. They capture supplies. They don't attack banks in most cases. Let's see. Will Fano clarify? Will it uh, tell which group attacked the bank or will, uh, will it tell if there are other groups involved in this attack? Government should tell the name of the group at least. It is responsible for this bank robbery in North Shore zone of the Amhara region. Thanks for watching.